Hello, welcome back. Now our next topic was actually Spruti, which was all about memory. It is one of the most important part of our learning system because the information we learn is stored and when needed is retrieved by this memory system. But before we venture into more detail about Smriti and other sections of this science, it is time for us to explore our ancient Indian learning system, which we call as the Indian knowledge system. We will have our next two to three sessions to discuss about this knowledge system and later on we will come back to our science or the Vijnan section. We are born in a land which is called as Veda Bhumi or in other words the land of Vedas. When someone says Veda then the first thing that strikes every mind is this is something related to the caste of Brahmins. This is one of the most wrongly interpreted concept for Vedas because Vedas are not about any caste, religion, god or community. Vedas are the representation of education or knowledge system in this world. When it comes to knowledge the world's oldest available education system which is relevant even today is Vedas. You may feel Vedas belong to India and I am an Indian and so naturally saying Vedas are the world's first education system may be my nepotism. Do not take my words. Just go back in history to the date before 1080 AD. Why before 1080 AD? Because that was the period before this Vedic land was invaded by others. As we already discussed in our previous Pratikriya Angata session, when we do learning, it happens under the influence of two situations. One is when the world is at peace and the other is when the world is at war. When it comes to the period before 1080 AD, it was the time when our land was at peace. However, after 1080 AD, India was under the constant threat of invasions from various sectors of the world and hence when it was at war, due to the war situations, in our Vedic learning system, the Vedic system got diluted and got mixed with various ideologies of the invading entities. One of the examples for this is the suppression of feminism. Gender never played a role in the learning capabilities of the students in Vedas. Many various in our mythology like Kaikeyi, Draupadi, Ahalya, Mandodari etc. were Vedic scholars and warriors. However, the influence of the invaders ideology change this scenario and the restrictions on the female participation in learning methodology was introduced. So the real true form on what the Indian education system can be found only when we take references from the period before 1080 AD. Under the Indian knowledge system division of our Indian government, we are now studying all the relevant system of education that existed in India prior to 1080 invasions. The references about what was India before 1080 AD can be found in the literatures of Suan Sang, a Chinese Buddhist pilgrim and traveler who visited India during the 587 to 670 AD. Another great Islamic scholar from the Islamic Golden Age period, Abu Rehan Muhammad bin Ahmad Al Biruni, who is considered as the ultimate source of world history, has written a book about Indian education system called Tariq Al Hind, which means history of India in the year 1070. Now, taking references from these books written by Chinese and Islamic scholars, we have gathered the exact system of education that existed in our nation. As Alberone explains in his book, the period of around 900 to 1000 AD, it was the golden age of the world knowledge system and the center of world learning was our land India. What was so great about this learning methodology? It can be best understood by going through this learning methodology in detail. Now, the ancient Indian education system can be broadly classified into six broad categories or domains. Just like today we have science, arts, commerce, etc. The education system in our ancient India had its complete knowledge system divided into six categories. These six categories are Shruti, Smruti, Puranam, Itihasam, Agamanam and Siddhantam. All the available domains of knowledge like mathematics, physics, biology, philosophy, astronomy, health sciences, linguistics, all were represented by these six categories of learning. Now the first part here is Shruti. It consists of four Vedas. Rig Veda, Ejur Veda, Sama Veda and Atharva Veda. As we all have understood from Finland education system, education should start with gratitude and it was not formulated by Finland. But Finland got this idea from our knowledge system Rig Veda. Rig means appreciate 
and this has 10,552 verses which explains the beauty of our nature and why we should be grateful to it. Then the second is Ajur Veda where Ajur means conserve or in other terms it is also called as worship. Here we are told about how to conserve and keep our natural resources intact for our future generations and this has 1975 verses. The third Veda is Sama. Sama means rhythm and it is all about music and chandas. In our Goda Samskara session, we learnt about how when we repeatedly practice something, brain creates neural pathways to store and make that information permanent. Well, we have 10,552 slokas in Rig Veda, 1,975 in Ajur Veda, 1,875 verses in Sama Veda and 5,977 verses in Atharva Veda. And how can one remember all these verses? Is it possible to memorize 20,379 verses? And you may believe it or not, in our ancient learning system, every learning by the age of 15 to 18 would be well versed to recite all these 20,379 slokas in any order. How was it possible? Well, all because of the chandas and the rhythm of Samaveda. When Vedas were recited following the standards and rules of Samaveda, then the brain could easily associate the rhythms with the verses. And so when you start reciting, saying these 20,379 slokas was an automated process with absolutely no conscious interference. As Alberani says in his book, this extraordinary capability of Indian learning system where students could remember 20,379 verses was one of the best memory enhancement technique and this exactly drew many Persians, Europeans and Chinese to India to know exactly how this technique of memory works. Well, all because of the beautiful pattern of rhythmic learning that was explained in Samaveda. Music ascendant of this earth through Samaveda. The first ever song or the first ever music composer in human race was Samaveda Pandits of our ancient Indian knowledge system. Then the fourth Veda is the Atharva Veda. It has 5977 verses and deals with human psychology. It is all about everyday habits humans has to follow to be healthy, productive and contribute to a peaceful and progressive society. Now comes the most difficult part. How to understand this Vedic Shlokas? This method is a slightly complicated process. It is designed in such a way to increase the problem solving skills of the learners. Every shloka is interpreted by using four different perspectives to analyze its meaning. These four different perspectives or visions are Aranyaka, Brahmana, Samhita and Upanishad. Now this is a very complicated structure of learning and to make it simple, I will take the reference of today's learning. Now every shloka in Veda is just like a mathematical or physics formula. For example, let us analyze the world's most difficult formula E is equal to mc square. The shlokas in Vedas are just like the formula E is equal to mc square and it is meaningless for a layman. Now this shloka is explained by the four perspectives of Veda. The first perspective here is the Aranyaka. Aranyaka is like telling E stands for kinetic energy, M stands for mass and C stands for the speed of light. So for every Vedic verse, when you see it from the perspective of Aranyaka, it gives you a simple meaningful explanation. Now this formula E is equal to mc square can be used to measure the speed of a ball in cricket. It can be used to calculate the speed of a rocket in aerospace. It can be used to calculate the amount of protein needed for a health that is to maintain the bodybuilder muscle. So the same formula can be used in the different context of our life. When we see Vedic slokas from the perspective of Brahmanas, this explains how exactly this formula needs to be implemented by a rocket scientist, by a batsman, by a bodybuilder and by seeing Vedic slokas from the perspective 
perspective of brahmana we can know how to adapt it in different scenarios of our life now the third perspective that we see vedic shlokas is called as samhitas now here we have in one shloka of rigveda a formula called as e is equal to mc square and in another place we have another verse which says w is equal to ma and again here from aranyaka perspective we will come to know that w here stands for weight m stands for mass and a is acceleration and now we have another formula k is equal to half mv square which is similar to an another stroka from aranyaka we will understand that here ke means kinetic energy m means mass and v is velocity and now when we see these shlokas from the perspective of samhita we can understand the relationship between these three formulas samhita perspective makes the learner understand how he can combine the formula to derive answer for a particular problem so seeing the vedic shlokas from the perspective of samhitas allows you to link various concept from various shlokas in the vedas and finally comes the upanishad in our classroom books after a math or physics chapter is finished in the end we will have some problems to be solved with live example this is what upanishad does upanishad is the practical scenarios of implementation of various concepts in vedas under different contexts and this is from the perspective of maharshi vedavyasa maharshi vedavyasa has given his perspective of practical implementation of vedic shlokas in real life through upanishad so in short vedas are just shlokas when it is seen from the perspective of aranyaka we can know its meaning when we see it from the perspective of brahmana we can know how to use these shlokas under different scenarios of our life relationship between different shlokas in vedas is understood when we see it from the perspective of samhita and finally maharshi vedavyasa has given his perspective about every shloka in veda through upanishad now again apart from this four perspectives to understand vedas we have six external references which are called as vedangas these are shiksha vyakarana chandas nirukta jyotishya and kalpa shiksha is all about the sanskrit language used in vedic shlokas it deals with the alphabets and its pronunciations vyakarana is all about the grammar it explains the grammar in the language of sanskrit using the vedic verses as references if we consider veda as a human and call him as veda purush then vyakarana is his mouth unfortunately there are no documented references available on the original vedic vyakarana as it was destroyed or looted from our country during invasions however in the 4th century a philologist called panini had documented this vyakarana in his book ashtadhyayi later on in the 19th century this work of panini was studied in detail by western scholars and panini ashtadhyayi is considered as the world's first descriptive linguist and hence panini is named today as the father of linguistics or he is the father of all human languages and the first to format a language to be written and pronounced with proper form and roots now the fourth vedanga is chandas when we speak or when we read something whatever we say or communicate should be pleasing and alluring to the listener for example a hindi sentence spoken by me will have no impact while the same sentence is said by amita bachan the listener listens it without distractions because amita bachan knows the chandas of hindi language chandas is nothing but about where to pass where to rise and where to lower the tone when we are speaking so that the listener hears our speech in a mesmerized way for a learner to remember more than 20000 verses of veda it is possible to him only when he hears it and pronounces it with proper chandas 
Scientifically speaking, this chandas helps our brain to create the neural pathways faster to store that verse and recall it easily. This is the reason why the lines spoken by me or by any teacher will be difficult to remember for students. But the lines spoken by a chandas expertise persons like film superstars like Amitabh Bachchan or Shah Rukh Khan remains in students mind forever. Chandas helps us to memorize words easily. Now if you purchase any technical book, you will find a glossary and index at the end of the book. This helps us to quickly find out where exactly a particular word is used in the book, in which exact page we have that word. To make this search easy, it will be alphabetically arranged and placed in the end of the book. Similarly, the Vedanga Nirukta gives us a reference of a particular verse or word in Veda so that we exactly know in which verse that particular word is used or where all that particular word is referenced. An ancient Indian grammarian who lived between 7th and 5th century BC called as Yaska is known as the person who created this Vedanga. He was the first to find glossaries and made us find words in books easy. And it was done almost 2400 to 2800 years ago in our ancient learning system by a guru called Yes, ka. Now when we study Vedas in open nature and when we lift our head, we see the skies and many planetary objects there revolving and rotating in this universe. In our learning system, events that happen in our life are driven by two factors. One, due to our past action. That is, my tomorrow is dependent on what I do today. And this is what we call it as vihiti or the karma we do. But there are some events that happen in this world which are beyond our control and they are called as vidhi or fate. It is believed that whatever calamities happen on our planet is mainly driven by the movement and position of celestial bodies in our universe. And to study the influence of these celestial bodies and all about its movement, we have the fifth Vedanga, Jyotishya. Jyotishya basically deals with astronomy. And this Vedanga is solely responsible to provide the world its first ever calendar. The first ever measurement of time was done through this Vedanga, Jyotishya. Now, for anyone who find very difficult to understand Veda and its meaning, a simple actionable guide about how humans has to perform his everyday rituals. For example, get up early in the morning before sunrise. When you wake up, always get up from your right side. Always take bath and cleanse yourself before you feed yourself something to the stomach. And these are the standard set of rules for a layman to follow to lead a healthy and fruitful life. So if anyone cannot understand Veda and is not able to learn it, he can simply follow this set of rituals and practices. And this set of rituals and practice that is created through the verses of Vedas to make people life easy is what we call as the sixth Vedanga Kalpa. This is the sixth segment of Vedanga. Now after knowing how to understand Vedic Slokas from four perspectives and six Vedangas, apart from from it, we have another four Upavedas. The four Upavedas are Ayurveda, which is related to the healing of physical pain and body irregularities. In today modern science, we call this as medicine. The second Upaveda is Gandharveda, which deals with the study of art, dance and music. It is all about entertainment and fun. Cinema, dramas, TV shows, music, all are derived from this Upaveda, Gandharveda. The third is Dhanurveda, which deals with defense. It is all about weaponry, fighter aircrafts, guns, missiles and everything used to defend a land. The learning about this defense system is what we call as Dhanurveda. The fourth is Arthashastra. And this deals with the study of business administration. It is all about profit loss, balance sheet, budgeting, estimate and everything related to business is learnt in this Upaveda called 
Arthashastra. So in the six categories of our ancient Indian learning system, just in the first category of Shruti, we have four Vedas, Rugveda, Ajurveda, Swamaveda and Atharva Veda. And in these Vedas, every shloka is understood by seeing it from four different perspectives called as Aranyaka, Brahmana, Samhita and Upanishad and we have six Vedangas Shiksha, Vyakarana, Chandas, Nirukta, Jyotisha and Kalpa and apart from it we have four Upavedas called as Ayurveda, Gandhar Veda, Dhanur Veda and Arthashastra. Everything we refer as Vedas in the first section called as Shruti has no author or innovator. It is existing on this earth from time immemorial and hence it is believed to be written by God Brahma. It can be considered as the rule book or the user manual for every human who is born in this planet. When we buy a simple TV, we get a user manual with it supplied by the manufacturer which clearly tells us how to use it and make maximum use of the equipment. If we do not go through this user manual, we may not be able to use that equipment to our level best or may even damage it with wrong handling. So similar to a user manual of an equipment, when we are born in this beautiful world, which is so complicated, huge, with unlimited number of creature, flora, fauna and materials, as humans, we also need a user manual to know exactly how why and where to use the different resources of this planet. This user manual is what we call as Vedas. Educating humans with this vast knowledge of this creation is not an easy task for Brahma and hence to provide us the right knowledge about every material in this world, we have an excellent learning methodology which existed in our country and nowhere in this universe. And this excellent learning system was the very reason why so many invaders and warriors from all over the world wanted to reach and conquer India. So in this section, we have just touched the tip of the first section of our Indian knowledge system and it is Shruti. So we have learned that the main component of Shruti is Vedas, which is believed to be delivered to humans as an user manual to live on this planet. Now to make us understand this vast knowledge, an excellent education system was designed in our land. And this is what we today call as the Indian knowledge system. We have just completed the Shruti category and we will discuss about the other five categories in our next session. Thank you.